Hi, and welcome to our video 0 0.1 Matter, where we're going to take a look at some basic intro chemistry stuff. So, basic definition of matter is anything that has mass and volume. And matter is going to be divided up into two main categories. The first one is what's called pure substances. The definition of a pure substance is that each particle is the same as every other particle in the substance. Okay? And there's a couple of kinds of pure substances. First one are elements and compounds. Actually, both kinds of pure substances are elements and compounds. The first one, elements, it's the simplest form of a substance. Okay? And elements are the things that are found on the periodic table. And you're going to spend a lot of time this year learning about that. And the basic definition of an element is that it can't be broken down because it is the simplest form of a substance. Now, a very important thing we're going to spend some time with this year is what's called particle diagrams. Right? And the particle diagram for an element is basically just going to be one circle by itself but they can be grouped like this. But notice none of these are touching. So this is the particle diagram for an element, where each particle, if I could draw well at all, is identical to every other particle. Another way of doing an element, I'm just going to put a line here to separate these. A lot of time you'll just see them colored in. So the two basic ways of drawing an element is either going to usually be an open circle or a colored in circle. And this would be one element, and this would be another element. All right, so the other thing are compounds. And compounds are two or more substances chemically combined. And they can be broken down by chemical means. So a particle diagram of a compound, let's say we take these two elements that I drew here and make a compound of them, and we would draw them touching. Okay, so this would be a compound. If I wanted more of the same compound, I would draw them the same way. I could also draw it like this and just kind of flip it over. These are the same because we have our dark compound, our dark element and our light element touching each other. Okay, a different comp, and this, by the way, would also be a pure substance because every particle in here is the same. I could do another compound with those same two elements. Like this. Boom, boom, boom. And since these are identical, of course if I could draw, that since these are identical, that would also be considered a pure substance. All right, so we have element and compound. All right, the other main group of matter are things that are called non-pure substances. And we're not really going to use this terminology. I just wanted to differentiate between the previous slide where we were talking about pure substances. And our non-pure substances are called mixtures. And there's two types of mixtures. The first one is homogeneous. And that means it's the same throughout. To break the word down, you're going to kind of get used to me doing that quite a bit. Homo, right, from the Greek homo, which means same, and genus, race, or kind. So homogeneous means same kind. And that's going to be a mixture that's the same throughout, where every part is the same as every other. So an example of a mixture, right, let's say we had here, boom. So I'm just going to do our white element here. And we'll do something else here. And if you notice, the way I'm making it, it's going to be the same throughout. Okay. Uh, examples of homogeneous mixtures would be solutions. Like if you had salt water 
or T without anything floating in it would be homogeneous mixtures. The other kind is heterogeneous, and that means different throughout. Right? And then from the Greek heteros, which is other or other kind. So a heterogeneous mixture, just have different parts together. And as we look at different parts of it, nothing's the same. This is different throughout. So this is our particle diagram for a homogeneous mixture. This is our particle diagram for a heterogeneous mixture. Something you're going to get used to this year is whenever I write something, I always say it. <laughs> so you want to follow along as I talk because my handwriting is atrocious, which is why most of the stuff here is typed for you. All right, so that's the end of the information that you need to write down. But at the end of every single one of our videos, we're going to have question time, where these questions, sometimes I'll answer them for slash with you. Other times I'll answer a couple of them or one of them, and you'll have to answer the rest. Sometimes you'll have to answer them all. And after every single one, there's always the possibility of a pop quiz that's based on these questions. They could be exactly the same, they could be similar, or they could just cover similar information. So what you need to do when you get to the question slides is pause it and try to answer. If you cannot answer these questions, then you really didn't do a good job paying attention during the video because I'm not going to do anything really complicated on these. These are just going to be basic questions helping with some of the memory kind of things from the video. All right, so moving on. So one thing we're going to need to do is decide for each of these, is it homogeneous or heterogeneous, right? And you have to remember, homo is the same throughout, hetero is different. So I'll answer a couple of these for you, and then you see how you do with the rest. So air, unless there's smoke in the air or something like that, the air is basically going to be homo genius. Salt water, unless there's a clump of salt sitting at the bottom of the container, it will also be homogeneous. Now let's see, I'll jump down. Cereal, right, when you have cereal, uh, unless, nah, because even cereal, by the time you pour milk in it or there's lots of air in the space, one part of the cereal is going to be different than all the others, so that would be heterogeneous. All right, so pause here and see what you can figure out about each of these. Okay, so here, a multiple choice, nice and easy. Which particle diagrams represent a mixture? Well, these are all the same, these are all the same, these are all the same. So 1, 3, and 4 are pure substances. 2, since there's different parts that are different, 2 is a mixture. Which particle diagram represent a pure substance? And by the way, I should have said this on the last slide, I'm sorry. But before you hear me answer it, pause it and see if you can answer it. All right, so pure substance. These are all the same? Yes. All the same? Yes. Different? No. All the same? Yes. Which of the following particle diagrams represent a mixture of one compound and one element? All right, so we're looking for, there's no elements here, so it can't be this. Plus, we have two different compounds. Here's an element, and there's one kind of element. Here's one kind of compound. Ta-da! One kind of element, and we'll talk about that when we do elements and compounds in more detail later. Here's another kind of element, so there's two elements. So, no. All right, last one. And... Diatomic. It's a vocab word that we're going to be uh, that you're going to be working on. But diatomic means two atoms in one element. And when we say diatomic element, they both have to be the same. Okay. So here, two atoms in one element, and these are all the same. So this is an element. Here, this by itself is a diatomic element. This by itself is a diatomic element. 
same as this, same as this, but since we have two different kinds, this would be considered a mixture. This here, since they're all the same, so it is a pure substance, but they're each a compound, so this would be a compound. All right, that brings us to the end of our first video. Hope you didn't find it too confusing. Uh, pretty much at the end of every one, I'll say, uh, if you did not understand something, you need to go back and watch it again.